Hey Nerdgasm fans, Jerry here aka Barnacles, and we're going to print a train whistle I downloaded from Thingiverse. I actually printed a large one, like the one that you see right here, and I also printed a little tiny one you can see right here. Uh, so just playing around with it. So here is the printer in action. I'm running it at 20x normal speed because uh, you guys probably don't feel like watching a two hour video, and that's about how long it took to print the large whistle. The small whistle took far less time. But uh kind of gives you an idea of how the printer works. It moves on an X and Y axis, and then basically the bottom drops out a little bit at a time as it prints each layer. And uh, it can print pretty sophisticated objects. If you have objects with a lot of overhang, it can do something called uh, supporting, where it basically prints like lattice supports using the material, like a finer uh you know finer material so that uh, you can break it away easy when the model's done and we'll do a demonstration of that in a future video but for this train whistle it didn't need any support or anything like that uh, there was one little minor problem while it was printing it, it as the plastic cooled down it lifted up on one side so it has a, the whistle has a little bit of a rounded edge it didn't seem to affect its sound or its performance in any way uh, but to fix that the printer also has an option where you can enable something called a raft and it basically prints uh, like a small layer around the outside of the first layer of the object to pin it down to the platform better so that it can't peel away as it's cooling. Um, uh, the printer is actually remarkably easy to use. I thought it was going to be a lot more complicated that, to use, but no, it turns out that you pretty much just get the thing up and running. Um, you calibrate the bed and the software tells you exactly how to do it and it's not complicated in any way, shape, or form. And once the printer's calibrated, you pretty much open up a program called Cura, C-U-R-A, or Cura, and uh, you import your model. So you can import your model in STL or OBJ format. I think there's a couple other formats that it supports, but those are pretty much the industry standards. And once you get those imported, you pretty much just tell the program uh, what resolution you want to print in. You can even tell it exactly what temperature you want to print in, how fast you want to run the fan to cool it. So it's infinitely tweakable, but there's an easy mode where you're pretty much like, I don't care, high quality, low quality, go. And, and with this print that I'm doing right here, I'm basically just saying, hey, use standard quality and just make, make decisions for me. And it goes and it slices the model into, you know, uh, you know, 100 or 1,000 layers. And each layer represents uh, this stuff called G-code, which tells the printer exactly where to run the print head as it's extruding the plastic. And it's, it's funny because if you think about it, it's actually incredibly simplistic. I mean, it's like an inkjet printer with the bottom falling out. And uh, somehow it can move with this insane accuracy that I still just can't wrap my head around because I'm looking at the thing and I'm like, all right, here you have a unit that looks like it's put together with a bunch of laser cut plywood, uh, a couple screwdrivers, some stepper motors and a little bit of electronics. And you're like, how the hell can this thing move a print head, you know, within, you know, it's, it seems like, you know, a tenth of a millimeter. I mean, or, or better. I don't know what the exact resolution is off the top of my head, but it's insane. You look at these printouts and the quality, and you're like, holy crap, how does this look so good? Um, but as you can see from the video, it, like building the whistle, I mean, it's pretty good. It had a couple little defects in this one because, I, like I said, I didn't build a little support, so it lifted up, and then when it lifted up, it kind of put a little bit of crap on the edges while it was building up the layers. Um, but the small whistle came out perfect. And this one would too, if I had to put down the raft support, I just need to remember to do that. And it does use up a little more plastic. And honestly, I thought this thing would be a lot more expensive to print with. Once I input the cost of the material into the Cura uh, tool, it tells you exactly how much it costs per print. And to print this whistle was like, you know, I think it was like 70 or 80 cents of material, which wasn't much at all. And if you buy the material in bulk, uh, you can even save more and you know, so so it's actually really cheap I mean, I look at it next to like my inkjet printer where it's like, you know I'm buying cartridges for that thing like every month and they cost I mean god awful like hundred dollars if you buy the if you don't if you buy the OEM ones and You don't go for like the cheap knockoffs um, So I don't consider it very expensive to use at all and I'm also printing with PLA right now But this printer specifically prints with PLA and ABS and then there's three or four You know not officially supported materials that have been confirmed working on it like nylon and lexin and wood fiber And all kinds of cool awesome stuff like that and the machine itself has performed remarkably so far You know everything I've printed has been like completely awesome even the upgrade parts for the printer I printed a belt tensioner to help tension up the belts because their tech support said that that was like a really good first thing I should do and uh, I also printed off a little cap thing that goes over and protects the wires on the top of the print head. I mean, it's more of a decorative piece than anything, but, you know, it just looks badass. And it printed that out, too. And I haven't run across anything I can't print out yet. I even printed out the Barnacles Nerdgasm logo. Uh, it didn't turn out right, though, because my 
the 3D model wasn't watertight. It had some problems with it. Uh, but I said, ah, screw it anyways. Have the printer print it. And sure enough, it printed it out. And I mean, it actually looked cool. It just had some collapsed surfaces because it wasn't, you know, it wasn't an object that was designed to be printed. Um, these printers now, I think I spent, it was probably about $2,200, $2,400, somewhere in that region because uh, I ordered it assembled. But, you know, if you're technical and you want to, like, go at it yourself and you got 16 hours of free time, uh, order up the kit. It's a hell of a lot cheaper. You'll save, I think it's like, you save like 500 bucks or 600 bucks US um, going that route. But I wanted them to build it and calibrate it because when I did a review of the unit, I wanted to show the unit for what it's capable of doing fully calibrated and everything. I didn't want to, you know, show the unit as, oh, here's how well it works after barnacles fucking throws it together in like two and a half hours missing half the parts so i didn't think that would be really fair for them and they've been an awesome company when i approached them they did a great job ultimaker they actually threw in an extra spool of plastic just for me doing some youtube videos i thought that was really cool and uh and their tech support has been awesome when the unit arrived if you watch the unboxing video there was some damage to it i was quickly able to fix most of the damage and they immediately threw parts in the mail and sent them to me i so that i can you know replace what was actually broken on the unit even though i got it working uh they still wanted to make sure that i had the parts to make it perfect and i thought that was really cool and they've been super responsive on email so guys this print is just about done as you can see here and uh now i've got a functional whistle and here let's uh let's take a look at it and give it a try well guys that's how you print a whistle that you find on thingiverse there's lots of stuff on thingiverse that you should check out so um i went ahead and print out a small one i print out a large one so you can hear the small one or you can hear the large one. That's almost ear piercingly loud. I don't even know. That'll probably clip the microphone. So pretty cool. Uh, no modifications. They were printed straight off of the printer and uh, I just used them. So uh, really cool stuff. I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please like, favor, and subscribe. It helps me a bunch. Also come follow me on Facebook and Twitter. I love interacting with you guys.